let's say you want to go on a safari tour, but you don't want to travel all the way to Africa. Um, now you can just go on a safari tour in Eindhoven, because since October last year, there's this group of virtual animals now inhabiting the city. There's quite a number of them. Uh, there's a map showing where they are. There are lions near the central station. There's elephants um, on a public square. Um, the map is still available at the Mad Lab, so you can do it yourself. Uh, and unfortunately, maybe you missed um, the event in October last year, where you could actually go on a later safari by car. Um, I arranged an enormous big safari jeep, and you could be drifting around the city. Um, and you would use your smartphone, sitting in the back of the, the, the jeep, hearing animal sounds, uh, looking for animals throughout the city. It was an application that was made using augmented reality. Maybe you know about it. It's the, uh, it's, it's the layering of something virtual on our physical world, when you view it through your phone. And this specific case is an example of uh, GPS-based augmented reality, where you place virtual objects at specific spots in the world. And it's quite a good example of what you get when uh, virtual reality, virtual 3D, mixes with our physical three-dimensional 3D reality. Then you get 3D written like this. And it's really something new. It's, it's the, the combination of uh, like the endless possibilities of this virtual reality uh, together with the uh, aspects of our physical reality, the space and time. And for me, as an artist, um, that gives a lot of uh, possibilities. I used to make artworks that were about like this big, so I can easily transport them around. And now I can make much bigger works, like this one. This is called um, Bigger, this work. It's, it's in augmented reality. Uh, it's the biggest interactive sculpture in the world, because it is as big as the whole world. It is in the skies everywhere around you. Um, and it's also an interactive work. You can click on one cube, you can change the color, and then the color of about 7 billion cubes all around the world change. So you might get feeling, you might, yeah, you might feel powerful. <laughs> um, so it, it, it shows like the infiniteness of this, uh, this new dimension. Um, yeah, and I mean, there's now seven, billion of them. I, I could as well have doubled it. Why not? I mean, there's really no end to it. Um, and actually, it's the, the work is even getting bigger day by day, because I made it to expand one virtual meter into the sky every day. So at one point, this will be the first really invisible virtual augmented reality artwork, because you will be looking up and see nothing. <laughs> there's really no limits in this new dimension that I, I call 3D. Um, not in, in terms of scale, not in numbers, and also not on uh, locations where you want to, um, to put your work. For example, if you want to put something in the White House or the Pentagon, that's just easy. And that's what we did in uh, February uh, this year, me and Mark Squarek. We created this command center and we put um, some virtual items inside these two locations. To be specific, um, inside the White House there is now a, a virtual balloon. It's in the Oval Office, um, and of course it's virtual, so you say, is this real or not, or maybe, uh, yeah, we should have a talk later on. Um, <laughs> it is very real, because if Obama would grab his phone and look around, he would see this balloon in his face. <laughs> uh, and on the balloon uh, are Twitter messages, so you can all Twitter, and if you use the Oval Office chat hashtag, it will appear on the balloon, so it's a sort of direct hotline to Obama. <laughs> balloon in the White House press room and you can use it um, with Pentagon chat and it's a sort of uninvited public screen um, at that location. Um, of course this, this technology is not new. I mean this is augmented reality of some time ago. You, you had this, this complex machinery on top of your head and you could see virtual things and real things at the same time. But really something changed quite recently. The massive availability of iPhones make that difference. It's now very easy. You say, get yourself a smartphone, download an application, augmented reality application, like later, uh, start it up, look around, and you can interact with the contact. So for example, you could, during a football game, play tic-tac-toe with 20,000 people. No problem, <laughs> because everybody will have the device there. No complex devices needed. 
And if you take that one step further, if you also analyze the, the players on the uh, field, which I'm, I'm, I'm now researching it with the V2 Institute in Rotterdam, um, then you can really create new game formats, like this one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so you're really talking about a new reality. Um, and I, you could as well create a game format based on the referee only. If the referee is walking around, you could score a point. So people will be being uh, yelling and, and screaming at the wrong, well, <laughs> wrong moment, but it, it's their moment. It's also real in some way. And it's getting one bit more interesting when the virtual world is really having an influence on the physical world. And this is what happened during the first worldwide augmented reality flash mob on the Dump Square <laughs> in April last year. Um, it happened right there, this empty space, but it, it really um, had the people standing around it. Um, so it, it, it really made this change into in the physical world, this, this virtual group of people. And actually there was this second flash mob going on around it. Um, and this, this virtual reality is not static, it's, it's cooperative. It's a sort of web 2.0 in this 3D, 3D dimension. Um, you can just, like, like this one, I proclaimed uh, whole Dortmund to be a virtual construction site and I created a tool. People could use it and put blocks at the, wherever they wanted. This is me using it um, at a real construction site. This but I and also some other people created it. It's, it's multi-user, so whoever wants to can build and start building. But yeah, you wonder about what is the consequence of this? Um, will we get signs like this saying, Please know different realities, but let's let's stay in this reality <laughs> all together. And, and more important, what does it mean for um, private spaces? Who is the owner of the internal space, for example, in a museum? So I, I, I thought about this and I, I photoshopped this image, I twittered it, and then after a while I got an email uh, from New York. Uh, Mark Squire, who is teaching augmented reality, he, he went to the MoMA and he said, um, he emailed me, um, what, about this, what, what is it about this sign? Uh, it wasn't there at the moment, didn't know anything about it. And I said, that's true, it's not there yet, but maybe we can make it real. Let's just organize an exhibition there. So that's what we planned. Um, we, it was an open call. We invited a lot of people around us to submit artworks. We didn't tell the MoMA about it at all. And we had the opening on the 9th of October. <laughs> Great fun. We had um, a lot of different uh, artworks. <laughs> and for us, it was also important to be. Um, I mean, we see augmented reality as a great medium for art and an art form on itself. So we wanted also to experiment what it would be like to be in a proper setting with this art form. So um, we found the right places for each of the artworks, like the fourth and the third floor were all for the, the 2D art. And it was really great 3D art in the, in the atrium. You could look around and see all these uh, faces. Um, and we also extended the museum with the seventh floor. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have one yet. And it's, it's still there, the exhibition. Uh, I mean, it's not in the way, so we just left it there. <laughs> no, I see it. It, it, it shows there's, there's no more borders, uh, no walls, um, and also no, no country borders, actually, because all the People in this, this exhibition, they are working from all over the world and they don't really go to the moment to put their works there. So, uh, actually, a, a sort of group was being formed out of this exhibition, the Manifest Star Group. We wrote a manifest and we're doing a lot of things now. And we also wanted to be at the um, biennial, the art biennial in Venice. Uh, but then that event is still very much structured in a, in a sort of country structure, and we feel that this free space is not really country specific. We work in this, this global augmented space. So we thought, okay, let's um, just put our own pavilion there because it is possible. Uh, because in this new space, there's enough space. You can just put anything anywhere and nobody can, yeah, you're, you're not in the way and nobody can actually um, tell you not to do so. So we um, are planning to do <coughs> the biennial with a virtual pavilion. And it would be about right there, I think, near the Dutch pavilion, next to the Belgian one. And after making this announcement online, I've received a lot of uh, emails of people saying, hey, we're actually going to do the same thing. So this 
year at the Biennial, it's, it's going to be um, even more busy than it usually is already. So there's a lot of art and there will be twice as much as at least. So let, let's say it's sort of 3D++ what's, what's happening now. Um, and in contrast to exploring like this, this enormous extension of, of, of this 3D world, I'm also exploring the, the, the contrary approach. This is my latest work. And it's maybe hard to see, but it's, it's one pixel. <laughs> <laughs> and it's currently at, at display at the Boston Cyber Arts Festival. <laughs> it's right there at the waterfront. And the, the, the special thing here is that one pixel is the smallest entity. It has no size. It has, yeah, it has no direction. Although it is in 3D space, thanks to this augmented reality, it's still actually, it's, it's one dimension. So this is the first ever one-dimensional <laughs> And with that, I would like to conclude, um, and I hope that I have convinced you that um, this infinite 3D 2.0 plus plus dimension is actually 3D, and that's where we live in. Thank you.